good to see you all in the new year and welcome to our latest edition of Open Salon, Open Austria's virtual conversational compass for explorers and pioneers. My name is Clara Bloom. I head the Open Austria Art and Tech Lab and I will guide you through today's event together with my co-moderator, Martin. Um, this event is dedicated to a very special topic which is near and dear to us, trailblazer culture a Silicon Valley story of digital transformation in business, society, and the arts. But before we proceed to introduce the stellar lineup of today's panel, here are some housekeeping rules. So please go ahead and ask your questions in the Q&A section or the chat. We will try to answer them in an orderly fashion. And after the event, stay around because we have a special treat for you. An interactive platform, Wonder, will gather, we'll have a meet and greet, and you have a chance to talk to the panelists yourself. And with that, um, I'll hand over the microphone to my co-moderator, Austrian Tag Ambassador and co-director of Open Austria, Martin Raufala. Thank you, Clara. Good morning, Silicon Valley. Good afternoon, Austria, or wherever you are watching us from. I want to also announce something that we are premiering today. If you look behind us, Clara and myself, we don't have a virtual background as we used to have. We have the real stuff. We have a real background made of paper. And this was designed by the Austrian startup Paper Town that made these wonderful, beautiful designs. And we are very exciting to have them from now on it open salon. Every time you tune in, we will do them with these real paper backgrounds. Today we'll be talking about the importance of digital transformation, but the occasion that brought us all together is Tech Icon Salesforce, a Silicon Valley success story that is coming from San Francisco and opening its doors in Vienna, Austria. We'll talk about what this means for Austria and its innovation ecosystem with our guests from both sides of the Atlantic. But before we do that, I would like to welcome US Ambassador to Austria, Trevor Trainer, who also came to Vienna a few years ago from, from San Francisco, where he was a successful Silicon Valley serial entrepreneur. Good afternoon, Ambassador in Vienna. I'm sure this must be a very special moment for you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for the warm welcome. I'm. I'm pleased to be with you. And, um, you know, I uh, read the title of this thing and it said, you know, a powerhouse uh, San Francisco phenomenon comes to Austria. And for a moment, I thought maybe it was about me, but it turns out, nope, it's about Salesforce. Uh, but that's okay, uh, because I also am a fan of Salesforce and a fan of uh, San Francisco, my hometown, and of Austria, where I currently live as the um, US ambassador. And I often have said that uh, San Francisco at this moment is, has been somewhat the Florence of our times, you know, where ideas and innovations um, uh, thrive. Uh, but I more and more having lived in now for more than two and a half years in Austria, feel like Vienna also at the beginning of the last century was uh, a similar environment where ideas, innovations were thriving and where uh, Sigmund Freud could be in a cafe uh, across from Karl Marx uh, or, or Klimt. And, uh, and I feel that spirit is very much alive here in Austria. Um, uh, this is also not a backdrop. This is the wall of my uh, dining room in, in Hitzing in Vienna um, and uh, an homage to the incredible artistic contributions that Austria has made uh, really to the whole world. And um, I am a technologist by previous trade. Uh, I founded or co-founded five technology companies before I became the American ambassador. And I also am uh, a passionate art collector, primarily photography. In fact, um, in June, the Albertina Museum in Vienna will be making a big exhibition called American Photography 
uh, borrowing uh, many, many works from my collection. And therefore, I really do believe that there is this nexus, this connection between technology and the arts. Uh, and in fact, I've often commented in my companies, looking at my engineers, my developers, et cetera, that uh, these are uh, like artists, people who spend their day looking at screens or squares or canvas and they're and they're creating uh, and they're full of ideas and um, I think Austria is an incredible environment for such things we at the embassy sponsor a number of programs for Austrian entrepreneurs and students we send them to uh, Silicon Valley to Austin and I spend a lot of time with them and I I see uh, that beautiful mentality and um, Similarly, I think it's very exciting to be welcoming uh, Salesforce to Austria. I, my only real comment is, what took so long? Uh, you know, you should have been here a long time ago, but, but I'm glad that it's happening. And, uh, you know, I remember in the early days when Mark Benioff and others were talking uh, about the cloud and everyone thought uh, that he was a weatherman and they didn't realize that instead he had this vision, this very futuristic vision for where all business and all technology uh, was going. And um, uh, at my last company, we were also clients of Salesforce and it was an indispensable addition to our stack. And uh, uh, who would have thought we would fast forward to the year uh, 2020 with a global pandemic and a true uh, unanticipated paradigm shift to online uh, and to virtual. And so here we are, here I am, there you are. It's wonderful uh, to be at this moment in history. And I'm thrilled to have been asked to open this incredible um, session. And I wish you and the panel uh, an excellent uh, discussion and, uh, and more to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador Trina, for these beautiful opening remarks. And with that, we'd like to introduce today's panelists. Um, we'll start with Stefan Hüchbauer, who is the Salesforce CEO of the Dach region, which is Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. We'd also like to introduce Eric Löb, Salesforce Executive Vice President for Government Affairs here in San Francisco. Ute Stadelbauer, Regional Manager for the Americas at the Vienna Business Agency, and Michaela Lausegger, the Director of the Americas of the Austrian Business Agency. Welcome to all of you. Welcome everybody also from my side. Again, please enter your questions to our panelists in our chat sections. If you have a question, that's the way to direct them to our wonderful panelists. But I would like to kick off this open salon with Stefan, the regional manager of the Dach region of Salesforce. Now you are in charge of Salesforce's operations in the German speaking world. An ambassador trainer half jokingly said, what took Salesforce so long? So from your point, uh, in a brief statement, why did Salesforce set sales to Austria and why now? Yeah. Hello everyone. And uh, first of all, uh, thank you to um, Clara and Martin for uh, having me today here that I'm able to participate. So um, I'm happy to um, walk you a little bit through our plans regarding Austria. So, um, but let me just clarify, um, we are not starting in the Austrian market, right? So uh, we are serving the Austrian market since a while and we have a great installed base in Austria. We have rough and tough 400 customers in Austria across all industries and all customer segments. So I'm proud to announce that Wiener Linien, a public customer, uh, recently decided to use uh, Salesforce. So, however, um, we believe this is an extraordinary time and uh, uh, we took the opportunity to embrace the, the, the market potential and the opportunity that digital transformation and the actual um, acceleration of the digital transformation, even also in Austria, is offering in order to bring customers, partners and companies closer together. So that's the reason why we reconfirmed our commitment to the Austrian market, our investment to the Austrian market. And that's the reason why we um, set up a legal entity. And this legal entity, of course, will extend our strong presence we have in the uh, DACH market. 
where we, by the way, doubled our workforce over the last over the last three three years. And uh, with that announcement, of course, also we will extend our footprint in in in, in Austria massively. Austria, just to conclude, is a massive opportunity, according to IDC. It's a $500 million market in 2021. And this is cloud, cloud software only. If you consider the ecosystem and the partners and the customers building on top of our industry, the partners implementing our software, the opportunity is even larger. Um, by the way, the Salesforce um, ecosystem in Austria will be six times larger than Salesforce it, itself prognosted by 2024. So um, we have a lot of good reasons to be um, really um, excited about the Austrian market. And I'm really pleased to um, also from my side, even quite new in my role, running the DACH region as a CEO to really invest even more and to commit more in Austria starting now. Well, that's wonderful. Incredible news, 400 clients, congratulations. Thank um, you. Well, that being said, um, I'd like to talk about your legal entity in Vienna. Um, so perhaps Ute, the Vienna business agencies, um, your mission is to support businesses in establishing themselves in the capital. So um, perhaps in your point of view, what are the USPs that characterize Vienna and make it an appealing hub, especially for tech innovators? Well, um, first of all, everybody knows Vienna is um, has a extremely good um, quality of life. So this is what uh, what 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 um, people know. People know Vienna as a touristic place, but for business, um, Vienna is definitely it's in the center of Europe. It's a um, talent hotspot. It's an ICT hotspot, and it's a, a very international city. Um, with a lot of international organizations, international headquarters, and short ways to all the major capitals. So um, it's not only good to live in the city because it's a beautiful city with a lot of culture. So um, the salon was invented in Vienna, for example, um, but it's also a very good city um, for talents, for technology, for innovation, and um, to expand to, um, to, to further regions um, in the East and also in the West. So, Vienna itself, it's Vienna's USP. <laughs> so let's bring in Michaela. Uh, your organization, the Austrian Business Agency, represents the entire Austrian uh, innovation mm -hmm. ecosystem. So when we talk about digital transformation, we often or sometimes it is painted as an inevitable process. It's happening or it's something that is about to happen, whether you like it or not. But we rarely talk about the opportunities uh, of digital transformation. So uh, if we just heard uh, Stefan talking about the Austrian market and its potential, uh, what is in it for both Austria and Silicon Valley to move uh, closer together, whether it is through this a new arrival of Salesforce or through the many other initiatives uh, between the two regions? Um, yeah, thank you for, for having me. Um, well, um, I'm working for the Inward Investment Promotion Agency, so we are supporting foreign investors on the Austrian market. And um, especially I tend um, to put Austria on the map uh, quite often, especially in the US. Um, but for example, just uh, uh, a story to, to uh, explain Austria. It's also, it's also an in, it's in terms of innovation and, and uh, productivity, it's also an industrial powerhouse, for example. 29% um, of the Austrian GDP is produced by the industrial sector and quite a lot. Austria is famous for hidden, so-called hidden champions. Um, um, world leader or leading uh, companies in a very specific niche market, uh, B2B sector, uh, very technology solutions. And these corporations, for example, now also tend or engage with uh, new technologies, with startups in the, in, in the AI field, um, um, spin off from uh, Austrian corporations or even uh, merchant acquisitions are a topic uh, in order to, you know, gain ground on these new technologies and, and be on the top uh, at, the, at the helm of the uh, innovation and uh, development. Austria is also, for example, a famous R&D hub, uh, like what Ute said, 
Vienna uh, and R&D is something you can't divide, for example, but also um, though um, Upper Austria, uh, Styria is famous in the AI sector uh, in terms of academics, corporates, etc. cetera, um, just to, you know, a, a, to name a few um, other regions in Vienna here in Austria who are heavily engaged in the topic. So um, there's a lot to, to, to gain and, and uh, um, learn here in Austria, and I would love to have a discussion about that. Thank you, Michaela. As we like to say in Austria, klein, aber oho. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Thank you for, <laughs> for pointing out all of our strong suits. And with that, I'd like to move on to San Francisco. So Eric, over the past two years, Salesforce has established itself as our most trusted Silicon Valley partner. And trust in the digital age has become a rare commodity and one of the most contentious topics of conversation between consumers, regulators, and philosophers. So as Andrea Jelinek, the director of the European Data Protection Board has stated during a past Open Austria panel, trust is the gold of the 21st century, not data. And Open Austria and Salesforce together, we have piloted many different initi initiatives that emphasize the necessity to bring together artists, technologists, and local communities, but especially um, also diplomats and regulators, policymakers. And together we need to discuss a future that all of us need to shape collectively and that we're all equally responsible for. Just to name a couple of initiatives, um, Taming Tech, we have an award that awards excellence in our thinking. We'll now be <laughs> launching that award at South by Southwest in 2021. So most notably, of course, we need to mention our EU US network, the grid that aims at, um, that aims to initiate, initiate collaborative projects to humanize technology through the arts. So my question to you, this is a truly pioneering approach. Why did Salesforce recognize the relevance of this um, initiative to break out of its tech silo and engage with communities, artists, and with other thinkers? Clara, thank you so much. It's First of all, it's, it's great to see you and, and Martin today. And thank you for, for bringing us all together and for the, the, the wonderful work, as you say, the partnership that we've had. and. And thank you for the trust in that. We, um, it's, it's, it's just great and excited for everything ahead. You know, when your, your, your question about breaking out of silos, it actually, it causes me to reflect a bit more deeply on, on the moment uh, that we are in. And, uh, and in, indeed the conversations that, that, that we have had uh, very deeply uh, since when we first even started thinking about the grid and why we were thinking about the grid. Um, you know, we talked from the very beginning about the importance of understanding, understanding different perspectives and different people, uh, reaching out beyond uh, your comfort zone, uh, engaging with people who have different views or experiences. So as we are here at this time, um, if ever there is a time to work on this and to, to think about going beyond your silos and uh, 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 looking to learn from different perspectives, it's now. Um, so, you know, this, this belief and philosophy of what inspired our work together from the very start, it, it just reflects, I think, this, um, this, appreci we, we, this appreciation, right? Um, bringing together different worlds, bringing together different perspectives and understandings. And in, in the case of what has started the grid. It's of, of artists and technologists and it's transatlantic communities. Again, people with different perspectives and skills that can help each other to see beyond blind spots. Um, in the Salesforce context, of course, we're a technology company, but we, we bring and we value bringing different stakeholders together, uh, such as people from the art world and the technology world. And we've done some projects together already on this. You just know when you're thinking of technology, if you're separated by silos, um, that creative and humanistic aspect of technology can be lost. And likewise, the very technological aspect of creating art can be overlooked. Um, so, I, so anyways, I like to think about our partnership 
and what we are doing together, it, it, it recognizes and it celebrates that there actually can and should be a, a human centered and a creative approach to technology. And, and we can help more people experience that and understand that. So, um, you know, Open Austria is gr the grid program. It's, it's just off to a terrific start. And with so much more that can be done, it's, it's a platform, it's a community, it helps people explore new ways uh, that can make technology beautiful or human and accessible. And, um, and of course, this is just all the more important when you think of the last year we've been in, in, in COVID, uh, where we're living as we speak today in a virtual first environment. Um, it's just, it's a reminder that uh, even in times of, of, of great crisis, um, there's a community of people and we're striving to help one another and to understand each other and to bring understanding and uh, different perspectives to the forefront. And, and finally, uh, uh, we all need to create beauty to lift us up when we're down. And so this is what we're doing. And this is the vision that I just remember from the very start back in 2019 when we started to think about this. This is what we could do. And I'm, I'm just delighted that we're doing it. Wonderful, Eric, you mentioned uh, the grid uh, and uh, its uh, attempt uh, of uh, Open Austria and our European partners together with Salesforce to bring artists and technologists together. So it's a very forward looking initiative looking into the future from the viewpoint of creativity. And I want to pass on to Ute and ask her about this very subject, creativity. Ambassador Train appointed to the big heritage of Vienna and showed us the big, uh, the, the Klimt um, painting in his background. But Vienna is a thriving hub of creativity, of creative industries also today. Would you uh, tell us a little bit uh, about uh, this uh, really exciting and very dynamic uh, sector uh, of the Austrian economy? Well, we see it um, very similar to how Eric pointed out um, the approach um, to um, technology and creativity. First of all, in the city, um, so there is a called it only it's a manifesto that the that the city had has when it comes the city of Vienna when it comes to um, the use of technology in the city. So it always has to be a human centered use of technology, and technology has to um, be implemented in order to um, be utilized by the people. Um, and with that goes um, a lot of initiatives that also we're taking um, at the business agency in creative industries. Um, we have a department that's called creativity and business that um, already a couple of years ago, I think, uh, no, three years ago, um, they made a first call to um, BR, um, BR applications in uh, creative industries. And uh, they always try to bring together also technology and art. Um, there are Good few a few good examples such as Oh My, um, I think they have a a, um, a art piece um, uh, on exposure in the Silicon Valley Tech Museum um, that bring together um, 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 AR, VR, and 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 artistic approaches um, and a lot of other examples. So um, also in fashion design, um, a lot of fashion designers um, use uh, use uh, new materials, wearables, new technologies. So there is a lot going on, and um, it's um, one of the main it's main focus um, of our uh, working creative industries. So this tradition of craftsmanship um, that I think um, Ambassador Trainer also has tackled when he referred to um, the secessionists and to the times of Klimt kind of took over and you can see it right now, but technology is always being implemented. And we can see that um, creative industries, creative industries business are um, very experimental and um, very up to date and um, very early adopters of new technologies. So there is a lot going on, which is, um, it's um, pretty thriving for the innovative um, milieu. And it crosses borders to different industries. So that's, um, that's the beautiful thing. So it's a, cross industry applications that we're having them from gaming to serious games, then passing on maybe to health and to e-health. Um, so it's, um, it's a very good ecosystem. 
Thank you, Ute. Um, it's it's funny you should mention Nomai because that was also an open Austria project that was actually yes. nominated for an award in South by Southwest for an AI and art project. So they are great. They have great yep. projects. <laughs> Hitting it hard on that front, AI and art. Um, this is truly um, putting us on the forefront if we investigate those topics. And you've already mentioned on this historic art that we're trying to build also here, um, connecting these two worlds and, and modern Florence, which is Silicon Valley, and clearly um, Vienna at the turn of the century and now at the new, in the new millennia, um, we're, ha we're more and more becoming a hub for digital humanism, where we try to combine all of our strengths, an international hub for diplomacy, an international hub for human rights, and also a hub for innovation. And thereby, it makes sense um, to focus on the intersection of art, um, technology, and humanism. And with that, I'd like to move on um, to speak about culture and culture in the sense of business culture. We named this event Trailblazer Culture. And whoever had the opportunity to attend Salesforce annual event, Dreamforce, knows that the company puts an enormous emphasis on values and social impact. So, Salesforce really does put a unique spin on this famed and sometimes also controversial Silicon Valley culture of entrepreneurship, disruption, and innovation, often characterized by its slogan, move fast and break things, as well as ask for forgiveness rather than permission. So I'd like to ask Stefan, how much of this trailblazer culture do you want to bring to Austria and how is it compatible with the European or even Austrian approach to innovation? Thank you, um, Clara. No, I think honestly, it is very um, com compatible. Um, um, I think it's very aligned. Um, at least that is what our customers are telling us in Austria and not only in Austria, basically everywhere. So, but uh, maybe uh, let me a little bit um, explain the, uh, the, 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 the specific Salesforce culture because not everybody in the, in the, in the, in the panel today or in the, uh, in the audience might, might, might know the details. So, Salesforce is committed to a set of core values, four of them. It's trust, customer success, innovation, and equality. And, 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 and from the very first inception, uh, when Salesforce started the business, um, the, the business of Salesforce was designed to give back to society and the communities within we are serving and we are operating. And our business model and the culture are specifically set up to deliver on these values. And that's, I think, very important to understand. And that's something our customers, our partners, our trailblazers are really admire. They, they, they like it, they love it. For me personally, it's all about also about transparency. So internally, in terms of talking to our employees, but also externally in uh, talking and uh, reaching out to our customers and our, and our partners. So transparency um, is the basis for trust. And as some of you might know, as I just mentioned, Salesforce is the number one uh, of our values. Uh, next is customer success, and both are linking perfectly together. So that's the way how we are building a trusted community uh, with our trailblazers. And trailblazers are customers, partners, and the community. Again, we are, we are serving. And that's how we learn from each other. That's how we grow um, our business together. So, and that's the way how we are also interacting with our customers, our partners and the community in Austria. And again, customers love it. It's, that's, what I can, that's what I can tell you. Wonderful. Uh, I want to ask uh, Michaela uh, what you just uh, uh, heard now uh, Stefan describing as this very specific Salesforce culture, which in some ways reflects uh, Silicon Valley, in other ways it doesn't. If you think of Austrian business culture, how is it characterized? Where does it coincide? Where is it different? What, what are our strong points and, and where can we learn uh, from maybe Silicon Valley or in specifically from Salesforce? Having lived in on both sides of the pond, um, um, I experienced also um, how Austrian companies struggled with uh, the, the American um, uh, business culture because they thought uh, everything looks like in Austria and we have seen all TV commercials and, and TV shows. It is sort of the same culture as Austria and um, they had a hard lesson to learn because um, 
um, American business culture is very different to what you have in to what you have or practice in Austria, I think. Um, Austria is very much, I think, a country of small and medium-sized companies um, that, you know, um, family uh, enterprises, um, the tradition is born or the product is born out of, uh, I don't know, a shop uh, in the garage or out, out of the kitchen in, uh, from the grandmother. And Austrians love to, to um, tell stories how the product was developed uh, from, you know, pre-generations uh, and how it evolved now into this uh, market leader um, uh, for quite some time. And Americans um, only wanted to hear, uh, you know, shelf prices, export uh, prices, how much marketing budget they can invest. So I, I had this uh, moment sort of uh, where Austrians with that, you know, and it's a cool culture. It's a um, you know, highly innovative product um, uh, with a, a lot of value. They tended to, to focus on the story, whereas the Americans focused on figures and facts. Um, so this was um, um, just out of my personal experience. Um, but I think Aust the Austrian market can easily keep up, or the Austrian um, uh, technology scene, innovation scene can easily keep up with San Francisco. Um, it's just, I think you have to match them up properly. Um, like for example, currently I'm working with a startup from uh, that has already founded an entity. They are working in um, um, visualizing scientific data with 3D and VR, and I'm connecting them with uh, AIT, the Austrian um, Institute for Technology, with a researcher in, in the field that he is looking for. And we have a conf conference call next week. So this is sort of my job. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's the way into the market and into the uh, Austrian um, you know, um, community and uh, mm -hmm. have a, a a good conversation with an expert and, and then you know what's going on, on on the ground in Austria. Well, thank you, Michaela. You've already mentioned all the keywords um, that, <laughs> that have been floating around in the room as well. Clearly you need to understand your customer base, you need to understand your community as well. And without engaging with the community, there's no successful product. You've also mentioned storytelling, which frankly speaking, I'm surprised you would say that the Austrians are stronger than, than Americans because my experience is, is exactly reversed. <laughs> I always felt that the storytelling was much stronger in the US. So uh, we'd like to discuss this further. But with that, um, I, I wanna have a follow-up question for Ute because clearly the art of matchmaking, um, that's a sublime skill, right? To bring together the right, the right ingredients, to um, create an ecosystem that actually works and nurturing ground where, where enterprise and ideas can flourish. That's highly complex. So how would you go about this? Um, how do you create the earth so that our um, little um, seeds can flourish? Well, this is, this is where we also step in and what we do in the end of the day at the agency. Um, um, we basically know, yeah, we know all of the industry and academic stakeholders. Um, we're heavily involved in, in a lot of projects that are going on with companies, um, research. Um, maybe just to say the Vienna Business Agency is um, 150 people. So it's a pretty large agency with a department of, uh, I think, 20 or 30 people um, working in um, as technology experts. So these are the people that um, have networks in the different industries, the specific industry. Um, they um, produce uh, white papers, they conduct research. And what we basically do is matchmaking and connect people. So for all income, incoming companies, such as um, Salesforce is one, um, we can link them up to authorities, to um, academic partners, to corporate partners. We um, provide um, information um, on the market in forms of um, um, white papers, um, research, pa research papers that we, that we do. We have events um, in uh, non-pandemic times. We have a lot of business meetups and conferences that we um, support, that we host, that we co-host. And where we also international conferences where we take companies, we um, create challenges, we have co-creation labs. So, we do all of this in the end of the day and with all the accelerators and hubs that um, are um, 
operating in the city, we're also heavily engaged and involved. In the end of the day, um, if you want to know something about a startup, an industry, um, a company, a project, it's always good to approach us, to approach me, because um, we for sure um, know what is going on and also whom to connect um, in order to facilitate um, an environment um, where um, ideas can grow and where people can meet. So this is what we do. Thank you. Wonderful, uh, Ute. And uh, just a reminder that you can always chime in here at the chat function. And I want to read one of the comments uh, in the chat function. Um, person is saying, I agree with Michaela. At age 40, I moved to Austria from Massachusetts. I've been here for eight years now. This topic requires, and I suppose it's this relationship between business culture in the US and Austria. This topic requires further dialogue as it ties into the educational system and history of the 20th century. Good point there. We will continue this discussion maybe at Wanda right after this. And uh, Kylie might uh, post again the link uh, of Wanda so that you're prepared to join us and mix and mingle afterwards. But I want to change this topic slightly and bring Eric uh, in again. Zooming out from the Austrian context and going to the global stage, Eric, I would like to ask you a bit about our work here at Open Austria and what we call tech diplomacy, the relationship between technology companies representing their customers and governments representing their citizens. Salesforce is very engaged in global challenges such as climate change, safeguarding human rights, closing the digital gap, et cetera, just as governments are. In what way will technology shape our global world order? And where do you see the role of big technology companies like Salesforce, Eric? Hey, Martin, thank you. I, so, such an important question. And, and indeed, one of the areas that, uh, the, that, that you and I have spent time uh, discussing, and, and, and that's one of the reasons why I think that the, the role that you have as a tech ambassador is, is so important to, to focus on these critical issues to, to society. Um, you know, I'd start by, by just saying that the foundation here, uh, when you think about role, the foundation is to recognize the, the impact and the responsibility that you have, but also to, to have some vision and to think about potential future impact as well, so that you're not reactive, you're, you're proactive in your thinking. Um, but that's not enough. Uh, uh, and then this gets to something that Stefan had shared before. You need to ensure that you have some North Star. You have a set of values uh, and that these values will in fact guide your business decisions once you understand the role, the impact and the potential impact that you could have. Um, you need to internalize this. Uh, the fact that, that, that technology, it's central to our society. And if anything, uh, COVID in this last year, it is, it is just, it has accelerated that and it has further centralized that. So again, going back to what uh, Stefan shared before, that's, that's why um, our guiding values are so critical and our values of trust and customer success and innovation and equality. Um, these are the lens through which we assess our business. And it's also why we do think that business can be a platform for, for positive change, not just a platform for change, but for positive change. Uh, so, so we take this very seriously. And we've, we've, we've talked about some of the things. We were a, a pioneer in the, in the concept of the, the 111 model uh, 21 years ago when Salesforce was founded. And that's a, for those unfamiliar, it's a commitment that we're gonna contribute. 1% of employee time, 1% of product, and 1% of profit to philanthropic causes. So just think about the power of that idea. What did that mean 21 years ago when Salesforce was just starting? What does that mean now? It scales as you grow. And so it's just a positive way to think about um, having, having impact as you grow. Beyond this, I, I'd also just say that we do think about our public policy priorities and, and we look for ways for not just advocacy, but for our technology to be part of the solution. And you brought up the example of climate, certainly an existential priority in our time. And, and this year so important as we look forward to COP26 later this year. 
Um, so what did we do there in apart from our commitments? Well, in addition to service cloud and marketing cloud and commerce cloud and all these different ways that our technology, we created sustainability cloud. We, we created a platform that can help businesses, uh, government agencies to uh, actually help track and mitigate their, their, their carbon uh, uh, footprint and impact. So you can have policies reviews, but you can use your technology to advance and drive uh, the objectives you want as well. So just my view about the role here and uh, my, my advice to companies of all sizes, but particularly companies that are just starting up and can shape the future that they want to be, it is recognize your responsibility, know your stakeholders and think about them broadly, not narrowly, know your values, and then, and then proactively and consistently apply them as you're making your business decisions. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Um, as always, incredibly inspiring words. Um, and having, having impact, being impactful and taking responsibility go hand in hand. You've really shown that quite impressively. And with that, I'd like to leave the geopolitical stage and go back into our ecosystem. This is, um, this is an open salon about trailblazer culture. We're talking about digital transformation. And here, we'd like to open the floor to you, the audience, and we'll um, kick off our first survey and try to recycle your answers to open a discussion to all panelists. So the first survey, and feel free to answer as um, fast as you'd like. Um, how fit is Austria for the digital age? Be honest, <laughs> we'll take it from there. Okay. We need we need some sort of music. <laughs> Do we have an answer? Oh, oh, wow. This is surprisingly positive. Um, Martin and I already were terrified of that answer. So we're certainly not a digital trailblazer, um, but we're apparently performing well. Um, some, something, okay, this is a bit of a mixed picture, fine. <laughs> some say we're slowly waking up. Um, Okay, so we're getting there. It's still, this really emphasize, emphasizes the importance of waking up to digital transformation. This is imperative for everyone. So perhaps um, an open round of discussion. Let's start with Ute. What do you think about this picture? Well, I think it reflects pretty much how it is because it really depends on where you are in Austria and um, where you're, um, like your small ecosystem you're in. Talking about Vienna, e-government, e-governance and e-government is a big thing and has been a big thing. So I believe that we're pretty, we have done the digital step into digitization. Um, but of course, um, well, COVID has uh, speeded up everything a bit. Um, so um, all companies that haven't had a proper online or digital um, appearance or um, digital twins, um, they now have, or they are now in the process of doing so. And um, things are moving pretty fast. Uh, but I can definitely, I can feel the mixed picture because if you're somewhere in the countryside, e-governance might be something a bit awkward still, but living in Vienna, we have, um, we have a lot of tools, a lot of sets, we have a lot of initiatives, um, a lot of um, also open data collections and initiatives. So there, here in Vienna, I can feel that we're already pretty, um, very modern and very digitized. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Martin? Yeah, would anybody else like to comment on that? Um, maybe Michaela? Um, yeah, I just can confirm what uh, Ute has said. And uh, I think also the last year has, has been, does it work? Yeah, has been also quite um, um, a push in digi digitization, especially also in the healthcare uh, system, healthcare sector, all of a sudden, uh, quite a lot of measures were uh, um, feasible within a few weeks or months uh, that has been discussed for years. So that, for example, was also um, quite a push in, in the right direction, I think, in Austria. I just hope that we're going to keep up the same pace this year and next year and the other, the, the following years, you know. So, of course, and a lot will depend of how fast can we all get out of the global pandemic. And we want to 
also uh, ask the question since there is a, the occasion is a big Silicon Valley company coming to Austria. We want to ask you what Silicon Valley characteristics should Europe or should Austria adopt the famous uh, Silicon Valley uh, characteristics? Are they still on vogue or not so much? So we will start our second uh, survey right now. Uh, and you can uh, see some of the usual things that we ascribe uh, to Silicon Valley, venture capital and investment, research and development, academic excellence. We have here Stanford and Berkeley, risk taking, uh, trust, we talked about that before. Quality of life, that's something we often think about uh, when we talk about Austria or Vienna. Mentoring is of course very strong, mentoring culture, skills and talents. Uh, regulation, maybe not so much in Silicon Valley. So uh, here's the list uh, and we give you a few more moments uh, to reflect and uh, think of some of these uh, values and some of these characteristics and in what way are they valuable for Austria? Do we want to copy Silicon Valley or do we just want to take what is good and necessary for us and develop our own skills and strengths? Uh, I think uh, many of you have participated and I will now very soon close the survey. Uh, and I think we have here, I am watching the results live, a very clear front runner. And that's risk taking. That's what 77% uh, <laughs> of Austrians think. That's interesting because uh, that's maybe uh, also uh, a response to what we are maybe not so strong at, uh, risk-taking, right? Um, yeah, and on place two, we have venture capital, clearly. More VC is needed in Europe, right? More venture capital. So maybe, uh, again, um, Ute, uh, Michaela, uh, is, is that in line in, 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 in what your findings are? Absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe risk taking. Um, people take risks, but they are afraid to afraid to fail. So I think we should uh, we maybe should um, expand this um, to um, failure acceptance. Um, so this is something that we should uh, that we should still foster. And venture capital totally. So this is something that lacks. Um, we have we have the problem. Let's say that a lot of startups, as soon as they scale up, they run out of capital and they need to move on and they need to um, change location. So this is some, something that we definitely want to want to improve. First of all, risk culture and failure culture. And the second is uh, mental capital. Definitely. If I may pitch in here. Um... Last year, we had, uh, for example, in the startup scene, we had one of the most, you know, the highest um, amount of investments, uh, to, to some 200 million euros were invested in Austrian startups. That's sort of uh, record breaking in Austria. Uh, the thing is uh, that only a fourth of that um, was invested by Austrian uh, public or private investors. And um, the first and foremost important uh, investor in Austria venture capital, especially, uh, was actually the US. Um, so it's also not just uh, for you know companies like Salesforce um, that we gladly welcome in Austria, but we also have sort of we have we need to bring apparently you know also investors to us, US investors to Austria. Yes, that's exactly mm -hmm. that. That's the gap that we need to bridge. Yes. Um, I'd also like to Austria. combine the first, the first and the second question of the fitness of Austrians, um, how Austria is equipped for the digital age, um, which clearly is inherently different because of, of the many, many family run traditional enterprises we have, um, the dichotomy between urban and, and areas, rural areas. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that Stefan coined this term of the digital imperative, which uh, we thought was incredible, an incredible way to describe um, this, well, this imperative, <laughs> which that makes it such a strong metaphor, that it's just not a choice to um, engage in the digital age. It's really just um, almost Darwinistic. It's either, uh, I'm going to say it, do or die. Um, you have to adapt to this new reality and you need certain um, characteristics that Silicon Valley has been known for. So what is your stance on this? 
Well, I think we all agree that uh, COVID-19 has accelerated the digital transformation of all, of all aspects in our, in our society, right? So, and uh, we have seen the trend already happening, but now it is, as you said, it's the imperative, right? Um, how, we, how, we, how a lot of our customers and, and partners survive uh, in their business. However, we think that uh, not the crisis as such, but um, the way how we deal with it is the opportunity. And uh, this is where we clearly uh, see uh, the, the customers um, um, yeah, acting, acting differently now and the partners acting differently. Uh, we, we talked about risk taking. That's clearly what we see, right? So um, as it is an imperative, um, it's not only about risk taking, it's also about commitment. We see more and more that um, the C level of companies, even the CEOs, uh, they take over the ownership and the commitment to drive the digital transformation. So they definitely consider the digital transformation not anymore as an IT project. Uh, they see it as a clear leader project and a in a in a, in a, in a CEO project. So um, that's uh, that's how we see the uh, the uh, the world in, in involving here. Thank you. Uh, really very uh, inspiring Stefan and I would like to uh, include one of the comments questions uh, of our audience and directed to Eric uh, saying when we talk about being prepared being ready uh, for the digital transformation what do we really mean do we mean technologically prepared or do we also include human uh, the human element uh, and do we also include the impact technology has on us human beings as well as in our society so i'll direct that question to you eric wonderful and um my my video is frozen i just want to make sure that you can hear me fine no problem I can hear you fine okay that's terrific thank you well the question it goes to the 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 very reason why uh, we've gathered together and for the work that we've been doing so it, it brings full circle our conversation today doesn't it it's it's the it's this notion that um, we 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 do not do our best when when we think in in silos um, we do our best when we bring in you know cross context of things of of technology and of the very human needs that technology is working to address uh, and so, um, I, I, I really think that it's a, it's, it's a question that comes to, um, the reasons why we're working together, um, the reasons why, uh, we learn from each other in different, uh, cultures and cultural imperatives as well. It's also the, the point that as we think about digital transformation, and as we think about where every uh, city or country or company is in that process. It's both never too late and it's also never done. Uh, and so to get hung up on uh, where you are, or where you've been is is not the point. It's, it's what do you want to achieve and are you willing to try new things to, to get there and to uh, address uh, yearnings and needs in a, in a better way. Uh, and so that's really what, what we're hoping for. And uh, it, it gets a bit to the earlier question uh, as well of, of risk taking. Risk taking doesn't mean um, risk taking without responsibility, but it does mean a, a willingness to try new things and openness to it and, and to uh, take, take new molds, but do it while you are informed uh, from other perspectives. And so I, I think that's how, how this all does come together in what we're talking about today and what we've been working on for the last uh, over a year. Thank you, Eric. Um, I think you've summarized this panel perfectly. Couldn't have said it better. Um, and with that, we'd like to use the remaining minute to perhaps talk about the future of Salesforce Austria. So what are the next steps, Stefan? Are you searching for talent in Austria? Are you planning to open physical office in the capital? What are the next steps? No, of course, Clara, we are consistently searching for, for, for talent, right? Um, that's, that's not only true for Austria, that's basically everywhere. But uh, yes, we are, we are looking for, 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 for new talent. 
However, we know that um, the uh, pandemic, um, pandemic clearly um, has changed uh, the way how we work, right? Uh, we know that and we, we agree that in the in pandemic aftermath, some jobs will go away. Hopefully, a, a lot of more new jobs will, will emerge. And, uh, but the, uh, the skills gap will definitely accelerate. And uh, reskilling will become uh, a big issue, not only in Austria, it's, it's a worldwide issue. Mm-hmm. And uh, people are looking to business um, uh, to, to play a leading role in uh, preparing the workforce for the future. And it's all about the business leader to, uh, to step up and to take responsibility and uh, to stay into that uh, reskilling and uh, um, into that uh, new workforce. So um, let me just comment on, on, on our online training platform called Trailblade, uh, Trailhead. Um, it's an online learning tool, free of charge, um, accessible from any device, from anywhere. Um, and that's basically um, an online learning tool and platform taking participants from a low level of technical knowledge to a Salesforce role within potentially six months. And we have seen a strong increase in uh, registrations when the uh, pandemic started. And we encourage everybody, um, especially those who are looking for new opportunities, for new job opportunities, um, to really register in, in, in Trailhead and take our trails and uh, everybody can, can, can qualify. And that's the, that's the opportunity we have. And to answer your question, yes, um, the opening of our office is planned, right? Um, I'm looking forward to downtown Vienna. However, <laughs> unfortunately, um, because of the pandemic, right? Um, it's closed for the time being, but I'm really looking forward and personally coming from Munich, I mean, I'm anyway very close to Austria and really looking forward to uh, come firstly to the market again. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Stefan. We're excited to have you. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. As a person in San Francisco. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, it was great to have you all. And um, Martin um, will give us a little summary of this incredible panel. And um, I just like to say, please stick around. You have a chance to talk to our panelists and ask all of those interesting questions head on. Um, while going to wonder, our colleague Kylie is going to guide you through that process in the chat function. We started uh, with the occasion of Salesforce opening a office in Austria, in the capital, in Vienna, and we talked about the strengths uh, that Austria, that Vienna have, a very dynamic, changing, transforming ecosystem that is increasingly attracting companies, even big companies, even very successful companies like Salesforce. And we also talked about not just business success. We also talked about the human element and the values that are important for not only Salesforce that clearly uh, puts it at the core of its business culture, but that are important for all of us as individuals, as citizens, and as customers, because we need to really direct, as Eric said, our future according to our own values and our north stars, our uh, compasses, our inner compasses. And in order to be able to cope with the challenges, we're in the midst of a global pandemic slowly, slowly inching towards the light of the end of the tunnel. And we are in this context celebrating one big uh, Silicon Valley company opening an office in Austria in Vienna. And we want to celebrate this with you now. First, I want to thank all the panelists, starting uh, with the opening remarks of Ambassador Trevor Traina, Eric Loeb, uh, Stefan Hüchsbauer, uh, Ute uh, Stadelbauer, Michaela Lausecker. Thank you so much for your really valuable uh, contributions and insights. I think we all learned a lot about this bridge that we at Open Austria are working for and at the bridge between Austria and Silicon Valley. And let's celebrate now together in this new digital space, Wanda and the link. Again, you'll find it, you have to leave Zoom. Can't uh, do this on Zoom. I think we're all a bit tired of Zoom, but check (laughs) out Wanda, which is a really interesting (laughs) platform where you can actually mingle and get to know not just the panelists, not just us, but also each other and talk and chat and meet and mingle just as we always did 
in the good old times at Open Austria, <laughs> we'll soon be able to do again, hopefully. It's been a real pleasure having you at Open Salon. We will soon come up with a new edition, so please stay tuned. Open Salon, the conversational compass for explorers and pioneers. Thank you very much for joining us today and see you in a few seconds at Wanda at the platform. Thank you very much. <laughs>